there is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear stories about this and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. <laughs> We'll get right into it, folks. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Noble Gold Investments have made it their mission to stay on top of the most important economic news. Three bank runs in the last month. These are the second largest and third largest bank runs in the history of our country. The government is taking steps to guarantee all deposits. But folks, that means more money printing. Plus, the Fed is sitting on unrealized losses of $1.2 trillion on their $8.3 trillion bond portfolio. And the Fed will continue to raise interest rates even if they tank the economy. Do you know who are the only ones who are not afraid? The ones that are invested in gold with Noble Gold Investments. Folks, gold is the most stable asset outside of any government control. Thousands have approached Noble Gold Investments to get their hand on gold. Hurry and go to noblegoldinvestments.com to secure your wealth now. Plus, you can bag a free 5-ounce America the Beautiful coin with each gold or silver IRA if you qualify. Folks, check it out. Please go to noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. We did several months ago, and I got to tell you, I'm really glad we did. Once again, noblegoldinvestments.com. Gordon, thanks so much for joining us here on Supernatural Confrontation. So, Tell us, uh, give us your testimony. What happened? Well, I've been watching your show for quite some time now, a couple of years, I guess. Uh, I'm a subscriber. Um, so I decided, you know, maybe something that, that God has shown me would maybe help somebody in, as a testimony. So I'm 60 years old, and uh, my first supernatural event was in 1984. Um, I was uh, sitting in, uh, I was, I was the musician and the singer for our church. And um, I was playing my guitar in the next, in a moment, like just, I, I can't even tell you, it's just, you're, you're in the presence of Jesus. Wow. There were six people on the left, six people on the right. Nobody, nobody had to tell me that it was Jesus. When I seen him, he motioned to come to him and sorry, I'm, I'm, I didn't think I'd even get broke up over this, but that's, you know, I, Gordon, that's okay. That's, that's okay. I started to run to him, but immediately I knew I'm just a piece of trash. I am not worthy to touch him. And I fell down on my face and I said, Jesus, I'm not worthy to touch you. L.A., I, mean, I know what Paul meant when he said, whether in the, bo in the body or out of the body. I, I thought I was there in the body. And Jesus reached down. He picked me up mm. he, like I weighed nothing. And he wrapped his arms around me and he whispered in my ears. He said, son, you're worthy. Wow. The next moment I know I'm sitting back in church. The uh, pastor is up ministering or praying to start the service my guitar is already set down i'm i'm so flabbergasted because i've never had anything like that happen and i'm like lord what just happened to me <laughs> and as soon as i said those words my pastor began and i don't know if people believe in speaking in tongues but my pastor began to speak in tongues i'd never heard him do it before and he interpreted the words and the last words that he said was I am your vision. Wow. So I can't tell you what that meant to me. So about two months later, I'm uh, visiting my mother 
and me and a friend, I think we were getting ready to go fishing anyway. I was in his car. We were started down the road. There's a, uh, some woods, some uh, heavy, thick woods on the left-hand side. I immediately was in the spirit. I, I felt like I couldn't breathe. I mean, the anointing of God was so strong. If people know what the anointing is, yeah, it was that plus 10. I said, you're going to have to pull over. I, I've got to get out of the car. As soon as he pulled over and I got out of the car, I started praying and I was immediately in the spirit and I looked to my left and I saw a ball of fire the size of two cars, maybe, maybe the size of a large Volkswagen Beetle bus, you know. Okay. And this thing was moving about two to three miles an hour. The only sound it made was a crackling sound as it moved it moved parallel to the tops of the trees. It's about six foot above the tree line and it moved out of sight. And, and after that, it was gone. And I have no clue what that was, but it, I felt like God was showing me that. Uh, another supernatural thing that happened to us, me and my wife lived, uh, I got married uh, at that time at 84 and 85. We moved to the farm and there was no farmhouse there. Uh -huh. And uh, there was uh, some old Indian burial grounds there too. Gordon, let me stop you. Yeah. What state is this in? It's, I'm in East Tennessee. Okay, so there's burial mounds on this farm, but no farmhouse. Pick up the story from there. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we go to bed that night. And uh, after I lay down, I didn't, wasn't laying there maybe three minutes. I said, you know, I'm going to get up and get me a drink. So I flipped the lights on. And when I did, the ceiling was completely covered in flies. Whoa. You could not reach up and touch the ceiling without touching a fly. So we, we left the house. Um, about a week later, we were out in the garden out past the house. And you, I just had this real funny feeling come over me, like something strange. So I looked to my left up to where our huge garden was at. And, and you ever feel like, you know, there's something there, but you don't see it right away, but you know there's something there. So I'm looking and I'm looking and that's when I spot. This thing is like four and a half, five foot off the ground. It's a snake. Uh, in East Tennessee, we don't have snakes that can stand off the ground five feet. No way. This thing was probably about that big around. And it's standing there motionless. And I'm talking to my wife. I said, look in the garden. So I take off running after it. And it drops to the ground and heads to the barn. And just as it's going under the barn, I grab it by its tail. But it was so strong, I couldn't hold on to it. Because I wanted to see what it was. I mean, I was raised around snakes and black snakes and stuff. So I wasn't afraid of a black. And that's what was black. They remind me of like a cobra. Huh. And I guess this is back in 85. So, you know, I, there was no cobras around. And, and that's what it reminded me of. Well, when we turned around to head back to the house, the whole side of the house was completely engulfed in black flies. <clears throat> so those are the most strange things that's happened to me so this flash forward to 2005 i believe it is we're gonna have a revival at our church so i'm all keyed up i've been reading that that book uh the god catchers i believe it was i was fired up brother i mean i i was on fire and i said you know what we ought to go to the mountains which the mountain one's about 35 40 miles but it's mountain road so it, it takes about 45 minutes to get to the top of the mountain okay so i wanted to go every day that week i tried to get other people to go nobody wanted to go so that, that's fine I, I i have to work late so when i'd get off i would make that trip because i really wanted our revival to be a great revival so i make the trip to the top of the mountain i'm up there and uh kind of sound like a baptist when they're praying, you know how you get loud up on the mountain. You're not afraid about who cares. You know, I'm talking to Jesus. I'm a, I'm a going to town. 
about the time I stop, I hear something at the top. Now, where I'm at is in like a little saddle of the mountain on the mountain top, but there's a, a ridge that goes on up um, to my right. It sounds just like a bulldozer coming down the mountain. I heard trees snapping, breaking. That place had burned about three, four years before that. So most of the trees up through there were 12 foot tall. So whatever it was, was snapping trees off as it come down the mountain. Now it's dark. So I'm like, there's a bear coming. So I reach in my car. I had a 357 Colt Python and uh, I get it ready and I cock it. This thing comes all the way to the edge of the woods and there's a tree there about, I'd say 25, 30 foot tall and it is swishing back and forth like this. Now I have seen a bear push a tree, but this thing was going back and forth. So whatever it was had to be gigantic. LA, when this thing growled, I have never, and I've heard bears growl. I've been within six feet of a bear walked right past me while I was hunting. <laughs> there, there is no sound like this. I heard it in my bones. So that's what I froze. I, yeah, I believe it was because I'll tell you here in a few minutes of the Sasquatch <laughs> I actually saw. So it growls and I'm like, don't come out because I don't want to try to shoot this thing, whatever it is, <laughs> this 357. I don't feel like I'm feeling safe with the 357. I waited a couple minutes. It growled again. I got in the car and left. Okay, so that was in 2005, 2006. Now I may have these dates wrong. I spent a lot of years and I'm 60 year old, so don't got the best memory in the world. That's all right. That's all right. Me and my wife were in that same vicinity. I go there quite a bit. Uh, now I live farther. I, I, I used to live in Greenville. Now I live in Morristown. Okay. So I, it's a lot longer trip now for me to go up there, but I go there all the time, take my dog. So me and my wife were going up through there and I, and I took my camera cause we like to take pictures. It was 17 degrees out. I think it was in February. Um, matter of fact, if you want, I can send you the photo. I found a footprint. Now, I wear a size 13. And this footprint was a lot bigger and wider than my foot. And it's five toes. If uh, you zoom in, I actually took this picture in raw format. It's dated. All the metadata is there. If you zoom up, you can actually see dermal ridges in the footprint. Sure. So I know there's something going on, okay? So uh, my wife's kind of a big skeptic, but that kind of caught her attention, you know. So in, tw in October of 21, I decided to take a trip and take my dog with me because I like to just get out and pray and then let the dog get out and run around a little bit. So we go to the French Broad River, which is actually – the mountain range where I'm at, if you go all the way through it, you come to the French Broad River near uh, Hot Springs. We got out. I got the dog out. He was running around playing in the river, and it was starting to get dark, and I, and I heard something snap it, and my thoughts was, there's a bear near. I don't want my dog to get hurt. I mean, I, I would jump in front of a bear to save my dog. That's how much I care about my dog. So... I hollered at him. I got him back in the truck and I thought, well, it's getting late. We might as well go. I, I know this sounds strange, brother, but it's, it is honestly the truth. I reached for my key, started to put it in the thing. And as I went to turn it, I heard in my mind, have you ever counted, you know, like you're counting stuff like one, two, three, four, you hear it in your mind. You hear yourself saying one, two, three. I heard that in my mind say come to this tree i want to show you something well I, i'm thinking that's just a bunch of junk I, I, i'm just being i'm just hearing stuff you know i reached for my key again the voice came again come over to this tree now i'm looking and at that direction as i'm getting ready to turn a key it says come over here i want to show you something so I thought, you know, if I leave, I wish I'd went over there. So I got out of the truck, 
I walked over there and as, as soon as I came to where the tree was at, I looked down this trail, I saw it. I would say the legs were five foot long. I would say the legs was as tall as I am. So I would say my height, which I'm six foot, I would say I might have touched this thing's belly button. Now I know that sounds incredible. No, it doesn't. I've, I've heard this before, Gordon. I mean, people have seen 10, 12, 14 footers. So I get this, that. This thing come off a stink bank like it was nothing. I mean, it had such a great stride. It was completely, totally black. If you ever seen a Labrador, how black they are, there's no shine to them or nothing. They're just black. That's the way this thing was. Its legs looked to be thin, but muscular. But I, I couldn't see from, let's say, uh, just underneath the breast up because there were trees and limbs and stuff. As soon as I seen I'd reach in my pocket to get my phone. My phone's in the truck. I put it in the cradle. I ran back to the truck, grabbed my phone. I came back. It was gone. Now, it was coming from my left to the right down to the river. And the French Broad has got a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, legends about it. They even say there's sirens in that river, you know, that sing people. Of course, I'm wor I'm working on a book called the App the uh, the experiences of the Appalachian Mountains because I'm an Appalachian myself. But I, if if it didn't go in the river, I don't know where it could have went unless it have just went back into another dimension. Because when I got my phone and came back, and it wasn't 20 yards to my truck. There was no place for this thing to go. Now, what confused me was it's my mind hearing that telling me to come to it. And I'm like, God, is that you telling me to come because you want to show me this thing? Or is this a demonic spirit trying to get me away from the truck to kill me? So ever since that, since I've seen that, uh, I had backslid for a few years and I had been coming back to God and praying a lot. And that's when this stuff started happening. I'm seeing UFOs everywhere. I've seen probably seven or eight UFOs. I've got a, on uh, December the 3rd of 2021, me, my wife and a friend were coming back from Johnson city and I videoed one and I, I thought it was Saturn because it was real low in the horizon. Saturn or Jupiter, whichever one's the bright. I thought it was another star, and then I could tell it was coming towards us. I got out of the truck. I filmed it when it got dead overhead. It, and just like that, it was all the way on the far horizon. What did it look like, Gordon? It was just lights, a ball of lights. Um, and I, I, don't, I can send it to you. It's on my phone. I'd like to look uh, at it. Let me, let me stop you right there. I want to go back and revisit some of the stories. So when you saw Jesus... He picks you up and says, you're worthy. I mean, that in itself is just what an experience. So when when you, you're obviously, there's like a time or not obviously, but there's like a time displacement because your body is in church and all of a sudden yeah. you're out of your body in front of the Lord. And then you get back in and there's like, no one's missed you as it were. I know that's what, see, that's what uh, I couldn't understand was how was I there? When I'm here, did they see me disappear? Did how did I set my guitar down? Because I have no knowledge of that. Right. Very and I'll tell you, but when Jesus said, You're worthy, I had doubt in my heart. I had doubt in my I was like, there's no way I can be worthy. How can I be worthy? So that was what was kind of blowing my mind. But I now I know that it was his blood that made me worthy. Amen. Amen. So let's go into the fly thing. So you you first stated, at least I thought I heard, that there was no house on the property, on the farmhouse, on, on, on the farm. Okay, so the, the farm has an old house. It's uh, the, okay. the house dated back in the, probably 1905, 1910, okay. something like that. So, so you, you're sleeping in the bedroom, I assume. Mm -hmm. you wake up and the whole ceiling is covered with flies. So what did you do? Uh, we... We, we left, uh, I, I had a trailer across from the house and we actually went over there and stayed all night. Did you, did you pray against it? Did you 
the next morning, were they there? Did you go back in? What did you do? Well, I was a new Christian, so I didn't know what it was. And I, the fly thing didn't, you know, Beelzebub. That never occurred to me because it, at that time, I, I really didn't know what it, what it was. I just know what I didn't want to be there. Now, let's go to the snake. There is such a thing as a black mamba. It's a black mamba, and it rises up like a cobra. Right. Now, that could have escaped from some. Did you ever see the snake again? No. So it just disappeared? Yeah. Very strange. We we moved out of the house. But I wouldn't stay there no more. Did, so, did you burn the house down, or is the house still there? No, uh, we actually sold that property. But okay. now, when, when we lived in the trailer, we, we had strange things happen there. We uh, In one end of the trailer, uh, if you would lay in the bed, the bed would shake at night. So yeah. we ended up moving to the other end of the trailer. When my mom came to visit, I said, Mom, I don't know if you're going to sleep. That bed shakes at night. She, oh, I don't believe in that stuff. Guess what? Next morning, they believed they went out to get in their car. The car wouldn't start. Yeah. So they had they had a lot of problems. Something's going on there because, you know, you've got the mounds, you've got the flies, you've got the snakes. It sounds like a really charged, a charged area. Very, very strange. So moving into the Sasquatch sighting, uh, you had an encounter with the Sasquatch. And I would, now I don't know, but in my opinion, uh, it called, it wasn't God's voice. It was there. They communicate telepathically. And it said, I want to show you something. I think the Squatch was wanted, wanted you to see it for whatever reason. Um, and you said at this time you were sort of a little backslidden. Is that true? Yes or no? Or no, I was backslidden prior to that. I had just prior. started coming to the Lord. Yeah. It's hard to say, Gordon. You know, that's why the that's why we do the show, because there were other people out there have had similar experiences and what what this does is it sets sort of a baseline for our viewers for us um in my opinion i'm going to lead towards that wasn't god's voice that was the squatch communicating with you i i read about where there's so many people go missing in the in the mountains and I'm a lot of them are never seen never seen again yeah, exactly uh yeah i think it's david pilates with 411 yep and uh so I would I would encourage people that if you hear a voice go the other way or just go ahead and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Because his name is above all other names. Gordon, thanks so much for coming on the record. Really appreciate it. Um, folks, as usual, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pray before I go, but I just want to let you know that with our Israel trip, we we are at 35 right now. The cutoff is 45, one bus. That's it. So we've got enough space for number 10 people, and then we're gonna going to seal it down because I want, I want to keep the intimacy. Um, and, and just so you remember that our, our UFO series, number five, the crop circles, it's available streaming.lamarzuli.net. Or if you want the hard copy, lamarzuli.net. Gordon, thanks so much for coming on the record. Really appreciate it. I'm going to pray and just send off our, uh, our listeners with a word of encouragement. So father, we thank you for this, this time. We thank you for this show, and we thank you for Gordon, Lord, for um, appearing to him so many years ago. We thank you, Father, that you're greater than anything. You are our guardian. You are our guardian. You guard us. You watch over us. You protect us. So I ask that you would be the guardian of those folks that come here. We just thank you for that, Lord. Watch over us, protect us, and we thank you for this, this platform, which gives people just a chance to come on and tell their story. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Gordon. Really appreciate it, bro.